a major milestone has been achieved as USS John F Kennedy has got its hull and flight deck viewers may note USS John F Kennedy is the second Gerald R Ford class aircraft carrier and is expected to be commissioned in 2020 it's one of the most expensive military projects being undertaken not only in the US but the whole world with an estimated cost of 12 billion dollars the construction is being carried out by Huntington Ingalls Industries which is sole designers and builders of supercarriers for the US Navy as per reports more than 3,000 shipbuilders and 2,000 suppliers from across the USA are involved in its construction the contract for the construction of the ship was awarded in January 2009 and work officially started two years later the keel was laid down in August 2015 as per Mike Butler the program director the building process is ahead of schedule and there's a probability that the ship could be christened by the end of the year in this video defense updates analyzes why USS John F Kennedy will be the most sophisticated supercarrier in the world let's get started this video is sponsored by War Thunder if you are like us fascinated by military vehicles and technology I recommend you give War Thunder a try it's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC PlayStation 4 and Xbox one with cross-platform support it has a huge variety of more than 1200 playable aircraft tanks helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s which you can take to battle on land in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all defense updates viewers a special bonus which will grant you a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below so take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world Nimitz class carriers have been the face of the US Navy and have enabled power projection far off from the US homeland USS Nimitz the lead ship of Nimitz class was commissioned in 1975 the Nimitz class has been able to accommodate many new technologies over the decades but the Nimitz design has now reached its threshold and this is where Ford class comes in Ford class supercarriers are being built to replace some of the United States Navy's existing Nimitz class carriers the first ship of this class is Gerald R Ford USS John F Kennedy is the second one USS John F Kennedy will utilize the latest technological advances and incorporate many improvements over the Nimitz class with USS John F Kennedy the US Navy will have two state-of-the-art supercarriers with another three in the pipeline USS John F Kennedy will have several defensive weapons that include two 32 cell rim 162 evolved sea sparrow missile launchers and two rim 116 rolling airframe missile launchers but the offensive firepower will come from the aircraft on board USS John F Kennedy will carry around 80 of these but in a war situation the ship could even carry up to 90 combat aircraft Nimitz class supercarriers got planes moving for takeoff using steam actuated catapults the system required a lot of steam piping a large condensate return and tons of fresh water they also have a lot of maintenance issues plus with steam actuation the majority of the force is being transferred to the airplane at the beginning of the stroke in a jolt this puts stress on an airframe and thus reduces the lifespan of the expensive planes USS John F Kennedy will use the electromagnetic aircraft launch system emails the system uses a linear induction motor with an electric current to generate a magnetic field that field then propels a carriage down a track since the power delivery is linear it negates the deficiencies of a steam catapult and is more suitable for future aircraft and drones like MQ-25 Stingray four of these emails will be present two will be at the bow with the other two at the port side enabling the simultaneous launch of four aircrafts American Nimitz aircraft carriers the French Charles de Gaulle the Russian Kuznetsov the Brazilian Sao Paulo the Chinese Liaoning and Indian Vikramaditya 
uses the hydraulic arresting system, which is a dated system and suitable for only traditional carrier-based aircraft. USS John F. Kennedy will be fitted with advanced arresting gear AAG. AAG is capable of working with all current and projected future carrier-based aircraft, from the lightest unmanned aerial vehicles to the heaviest manned fighters. The heart of any aircraft carriers are the nuclear reactors which provide the required power. The Ford class has newly designed reactors. Two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors will be installed on USS John F. Kennedy. Each of these are capable of producing 300 megawatts of electricity, triple the 100 megawatts of each Nimitz class vessel. The huge power supply provides for the legroom required for future expansions like inducting lasers and electromagnetic railguns. U.S. military has been working on these two technologies for some time now. USS John F. Kennedy will be equipped with the most powerful radar to be ever fitted in a warship. It will have an integrated, active electronically scanned array search and tracking and SPY-3 radar system. The ANSPY-3 is manufactured by Raytheon and designed for both blue water and littoral operations. In general, ships have different radar for different purposes, like one for scanning large areas and another for target engagement. These are integrated by the ship's combat system. But ANSPY-3 is different. It's a dual-band radar DBR, that utilizes a multi-tier dual-band tracker, which consists of a local X-band tracker a local S-band tracker and a central tracker. The X-band tracker is optimized for low latency to support its mission of providing defense against fast, low-flying missiles, while the S-band tracker is optimized for large area coverage. The central tracker merges the two signals to provide a comprehensive situational awareness. So the ship's combat system will receive a single stream of data and won't have to merge them as the radar will itself do that work. This new system has no moving parts, therefore minimizes maintenance and manning requirements. The radar helps with maintaining the stealth profile of the warship as it has fewer antennas and is flush mounted on the superstructure. Because of better integration, the ANSPY-3 has faster response time and it better utilizes the power and bandwidth of the ship. USS John F. Kennedy has a newly designed deck. It has three aircraft elevators that are more efficient when compared to four in Nimitz-class supercarriers. Reduction in one aircraft elevator has freed up space which will enable faster maneuvering of aircraft in the deck. With this space for flight deck, operations and aircraft maintenance is increased. There are several other smaller but consequential enhancements. These changes are expected to significantly improve the sortie rate. The max sortie rate is expected to be in the region of 160 flights per day for 30 days, with a surge capacity of up to 270 in one day. This will boost the mission handling capacity in a big way. Ford uses extensive automation, and this has jacked up initial acquisition cost but this will help to reduce the future operating cost. For example, Ford-class carriers need a total of only 2,600 sailors, about 700 fewer than a Nimitz class. Considering the 50-year lifespan of the carrier, this will translate to billions of dollars in savings. This will also mean that there will be a lesser chance of any issue or accidents due to human errors. Viewers may note that recently the U.S. Navy has suffered a series of setbacks due to collisions caused mainly due to human error. USS John F. Kennedy will be much more nimble and efficient. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.